Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm going to walk you through what is Shannon Entropy and how to implement it in Python. Being able to quantify the amount of information in some sort of data set, a sequence, uh, is useful in many fields and for many data sets. I allow us to answer questions like, uh, um, which of these two data set is more information rich than another? So Shannon Entropy is one of such variable that given a historic about um, the sequence or probably distribution uh, can tell you the amount of information slash complexity slash surprise um, in the sequence. So Shannon Entropy kind of come up again and again in uh, machine learning, um, in decision tree, in uh, Bayesian inference, so understanding the background of it, or just at like the surface level of it, um, will allow you to have a better um, sense of some of the analysis that we're going to put together. So for those that prefer to go through a blog post or uh, just a code, I have both of them um, in the description of this video. So we're going to go through the following sequence, but uh, feel free to just skip around. I've annotated uh, each segment. So first we're going to check out like just a general definition of what information is. Uh, and how this ties up to uh, Shannon Entropy. Then we're gonna take a look at the formula, which is very simple, and uh, make sure that we understand each of the parts. Finally, we're just gonna um, implement Shannon Entropy in Python uh, with some sort of data set that kind of matters, um, and we're gonna reproduce a figure of a paper um, of Shannon Entropy across, uh, across space. Okay, so let's start with the definition of what information is. And like always, uh, Wikipedia has a pretty good definition. I'm just gonna read it quickly over here. So, the core idea of information theory is that the informational value of a communicated message depends on the degree to which the content of the message is surprising. So there's the element of surprise. If a highly likely event occurs, the message carries very little new information. On the other hand, if a highly unlikely event occurs, the message is much more informative. So, for instance, the knowledge that some particular number will not be the winning number of a lottery provides very little information, because any particular chosen number will almost certainly not win. However, knowledge that a particular number will win a lottery has high informational value, because it communicates the outcome of a very low probability event. So, you see here, like surprise, probability, information, complexity, all of this is kind of tied together, but the underlying kind of mathematical framework for all of this is uh, probability. So just to restate, if a component of a message in a sequence is very unlikely to be there and is there, it's highly surprising, a lot of information. But if like the, um, a component that is pretty common is there, it's not at all surprising. So if we were looking at, let's say, the um, English language, uh, and I was uh, talking about the text. Uh, if I tell you that there's an E in the phrase, um, there's not much information. It can be any phrase. Uh, if I tell you that there's a Z or X, the phrase, uh, the amount of thing that you can say here, it's pretty limited, there's more information. So there's a inverse um, relationship between information and probability of occurrence. So the more probable the thing is, the less information, the highest information, the least probable it is. So given this initial insight, Shannon Entropy wrote a, a pretty uh, lengthy uh, paper thesis called A Mathematical Theory of Communication. And in there, it defined a metric um, that high probability of occurrence of some component uh, and information. And this metric is called uh, Shannon Entropy. We're not gonna delve into the paper, what we're going to do is go straight to the formula and uh, pinpoint what each of the part means. So let's do that right now. All right, so here we are. This is my very high tech setup. Um, we can go through the formula. So if you look at it, the formula seems pretty simple, even if you're not that um, mathematically inclined. Um, I'm gonna walk you through the whole thing, but this quantity over here is, um, is Shannon entropy. That's the that's the metric of entropy. So you have a few things um, that we're going to elucidate. So H represents uh, the amount of uh, entropy, and it's H on uh, X, which is kind of a of a, of a vector. It's a sequence of of, uh, 
of stuff. Um, so this big X is like, if we were looking with say, at DNA, it will be like A, T, C, G, and then blah, blah, blah. This is X. So this, this sequence of, of stuff is, is the quantity X. Good. So that's what we're, we have over here. And then you have uh, XI over there. Um, so this is where it can get very confusing. XI denote the possible um, sequence of uh, the possible component of your sequence. So if we're looking at DNA, um, I, I say this because the example afterward will be the, uh, with DNA. Okay, you have four possible X. You have A, you have T, you have C, and you have G, which represent different nucleotide. Um, however, it, depending on um, the, um, how it's implemented, um, this can also refer to uh, the actual character in the sequence. So if you had a mega sequence of 300 nucleotide, um, XI could represent this, right? So it could represent the first one and then it will represent the second one. Uh, and those two could be technically A uh, together. So it doesn't matter too much. Um, it, it doesn't matter too much because you're going to be comparing usually and uh, channel entropy on the same way you've calculated both stuff uh, but just be aware that some in, in some uh, paper or, or some analysis uh, this will be treated as the the eye will be treated as the position in the sequence and sometimes the eye will be treated as the type of character you have a t c g in this in this case so it's either this or the index in like the the, the sequence array. So um, that's one thing. And then we have this, the P and then log of P of XI. Uh, so this is the probability um, of XI. It's the probability that XI appear um, in, the, in, the, in the thing. So if we were looking at the English uh, text, uh, the probability that we have E or X are different. Right? Um, I don't know what the probability is, but if you were to take everything that was ever written in English and in, um, in, um, um, yeah, in English, you're gonna, you can, could get the probability uh, distribution for, uh, sorry, probability for uh, the occurrence of E and the probability for the occurrence of X. So that's actually what are composing our uh, Shannon entropy. So um, you might get into a um, if you're if you're trying to use an entropy in your analysis, you might get uh, a bit confused because you don't have these, right? Uh, you might not have the probability that A in a DNA sequence appear. Um, and if you search for help, maybe someone will tell you that, um, well, if you want to use an entropy, you need to have probability um, uh, probability uh, of, uh, of occurrence of your stuff. Um, you can you, you can calculate an approximation of these by calculating the frequency in your sequence that xi appear um, that can work um, yeah that's, that's just there's just a something to to keep in mind so if we decompose the, the formula what you're doing is you're taking the negative of this whole thing right um, so that's you're taking the negative because this thing will be negative so if you're taking a negative of that, that will be positive. So you're going to get a positive value. Um, and then here, um, this part is just, a, you repeat from i equal one. So the first type of thing that you have. So let's say add a, t, c, g. Well, this is i one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. And n over there equal four, right? Um, so what does that mean is that you're going to repeat that inner thing four times and um, it, the first time you're gonna do it on A, the, the second time you're gonna do it on T, third time on C and fourth time on G. If you were to use this as a sequence instead, you will run that on each of the individual uh, element, but the N will be much, much bigger. Um, so that's for the uh, outer part and the inner part is, is, is very simple. You you just um, multiplying the probability that of xi um, times the log of the probability of xi. That's the, the that's it. That's all you're doing 
Um, so the first time you're going to do the probability of A times the log of the probability of A um, plus the probability of T times the log of probability of T and etc. until you hit the, the end. You sum all of these up and then you get this uh, some negative number which you are uh, going to take the negative of it. Um, so here the log, what is the quantity? Uh, sorry, for the log, what is the uh, base? Um, you, you decide uh, what the base is, uh, but the base will um, tell you what is the unit of the of uh, your Shannon entropy metric. So if you if you think uh, I believe that if you take base two, um, the unit of your entropy will be called a Shannon, um, and I think if you take base ten, it will be different. So it, it all depends. Uh, just be sure that you're using the same thing. Um, throughout when you're doing a comparison and that you're using the same thing as whatever field of study uh, they usually use and that's pretty much it there's nothing more to the to the formula it's a pretty simple one easy to uh, to use the only complexity arises when um, you don't have the probability of, uh, of all of your uh, component how do you do that um, yeah and we're gonna see it uh, in a few seconds on the Python. Okay, so here we are into the Jupyter notebook. Um, so uh, this notebook was used on a previous video about common growth complexity. Check it out if you're interested. Um, it's, not, it's not a way of measuring complexity, but it's not information. This is measuring channel entropy, measuring information. Um, so uh, long story short, uh, short we um, we've looked at the. A DNA sequence um, dataset which has four possible value ATGC um, and we just manipulated this to do like a mega sequence uh, to fake a chromosome um, and the point of this whole thing was to calculate um, here comma graph complexity on uh, windows of this mega sequence that is mimicking a chromosome uh, but here what we're going to do is do the same thing with channel entropy and then generate a nice plot. Um, we can look at the plot right away. It's over here. So basically this is like um, the position in in the in the mega chromosome that I've, uh, I have. I'm trying to mimic a paper that uh, um, is doing this same analysis. Um, and basically what we're doing is figuring out which region of the chromosome is more or less complex in here. It's where it's more or less information dense. Yeah, that's that's about it. There's if you interested, take a look at the other um, uh, video. But um, I'm gonna go quickly on that. So basically, I load the data set and it looks like this. But I don't want that. What I want is one mega sequence. Um, so what I did was just over here. I just uh, like uh, dropped one of the or one of the column and then concatenated everything together just so that I can create a mega uh, kind of a mega sequence that looked like a, a, a chromosome because I wanted to make, make what the paper was doing without downloading the data set. Um, so that's for the data download and it's just a text file of, uh, of all of these. So now I have a mega sequence of ATCG in different uh, order and I'm trying to calculate channel entropy. So if you see here, I'm doing a generate channel sequence um, and then I give a, a, my mega DNA sequence and I give channel entropy. In uh, this notebook, what we're going to do is um, two implementation of channel entropy. Um, one we, where we treat, um, remember the XI as having four possible value, A, T, C, G, and one where we treat um, XI as being the index in the array. Um, which one is right? I believe it's the first one, but the paper is using the second one. Um, doesn't matter. I don't think it matters too much if you're doing comparison um, because the overall shape of the thing is the same, roughly. So um, this generate challenge sequence uh, function, we can take a look at it. It's over here. Um, so what we're doing here, we're, I'm using like a lambda function so that I can decide what I'm going to call, but the overall structure is I'm generating a window uh, of size 250 and then I'm moving it through 
the my big chromosome in order for me to create this kind of plot over here and uh, this position is like like at the zero position it's like the first 250 window and in position one is 250 um, shifted by 50 because the paper was doing that and then I calculate chin and entropy which is one metric and then I keep doing this and I can kind of trace how um, information rich or complex the this particular position uh, in this fake chromosome is um, if you have if you want more information about the method you can take a look at the at the paper but in a nutshell this is what I'm doing so what we're more interested in is those function which is uh, Shannon entropy and then Shannon entropy corrected um, so Shannon entropy is the one which uh, was used in the paper but we're gonna first look at the corrected version so um, that's the formula we saw before right so you remember you have the probability of whatever and then um, the log 2 of the probability of whatever um, so we start with our DNA sequence which is our like a big string of a t c g and blah 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 and what we're going to do is uh, do the summation and we're doing the summation by just doing a for loop um, around the um, the whole not the whole sequence but a for loop around x i right remember we're doing that so x i in this case is a t g c there's also n which is kind of like nucleated that Maybe you didn't sequence properly or whatever. In this data set, I believe there are there is some that have that, but not all. So you just add it there. So basically here n will be like the small n in the formula will be equal to five. And x i x1 is a, x2 is t, x3 is g, x4 is c, and x5 x5 is n. So we do it like this. So we're gonna do five plus of the p times log p. Um, and what we're doing, because we don't have the probability, we're just calculating the relative frequency. So we're doing um, the, this big string, we're going to count um, the nucleotide, uh, which is this one, and then we divide by the length of the sequence. And we have a relative frequency now. And this relative frequency, we use it as a proxy for the probability of, um, of, the, of uh, xi to appear. So if the relative frequency is bigger than zero, it's good, we're gonna do this. If it's not, we're just gonna skip it because some sequence don't have an end. Some sequence do. Um, so that's what we're doing and then it's gonna do, uh, gonna come out to entropy equal entropy minus that. Um, I, I've put the minus sign inside of the summation. Yeah, so here I'm putting the minus sign straight up into the summation because we're doing zero minus uh, the first element and then this negative value minus the second element. Um, so it, it does the same thing. It's like you had minus one times the summation, which you can uh, put in it, uh, if I'm correct. Um, and then you have, um, you're doing relative frequency, which is the probability times um, uh, the log two of the relative frequency again. And that's our, the middle part. And that's it. There's nothing. Um, there's nothing more fancy uh, about that. And by going through like this five time, I can return an entropy. That makes sense. Um, so let's look at the, what happens if you treat uh, each element x i as the character into the thing. Well, the very first thing that I did was the same formula, same everything, except the i is uh, the index in the array. Um, I created a. a a dictionary where I'm gonna just store um, the relative frequency because uh, here I, I would need to calculate the relative frequency first then iterate over the uh, the sequence in the other case I didn't have to do that well actually I did but it was um, it was hidden by this which is doing it uh, uh, internally so I make my uh, relative frequency dictionary and then I just iterate in um, all of these, uh, I treat on the A's and then I treat on the T's. So this uh, run five time. Um, and basically I'm doing the same thing as I'm doing uh, over there. Um, I could have put in, put in this in here, but it will have been a lot, uh, a lot of wasted um, 
iteration. So by, because I'm setting this up before, I just need, I, ju I will use the information here in order to directly use the relative frequency uh, fake probability. Um, so that's it. That's pretty much it. So DNA sequence count uh, nucleated. So the first one will be A, the second one will be T, then G, C, and N. And I'm just going to store that. And after that, it's, it's kind of the same thing as before. And I'm just uh, ex ex extracting the relative frequency of the nucleotide over there and putting it uh, as the relative frequency for this round. But I'm uh, running this through each of the uh, elements. So the first element might be A, second element might be A again, and N over here is um, 250 because it's a window of 250. That's pretty much it. And then uh, I return the entropy and we're good. And if we look at the um, uh, the plot that we have, is the, it looks like this. So this is for um, when you, you treat as a uh, the index as the index in the in the in the sequence, um, and you you see that like there's some part that is um, less information rich than others, uh, relatively, um, and that's it. That's the with the data set. That's how it look like. Uh, if you use the other kind of uh, more correct way of calculating it. Um, from the literature, you're gonna get this. It's kind of similar, but not exactly. Um, not sure why, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure which one is is totally right. It's a bit blurry. Um, from the literature, this one is the the right one, but from the the paper, um, they use this one. But in both cases, same process. Um, a relatively simple uh, algorithm. All right, that's it. This metric isn't too complicated. Um, the implementation with the probability distribution might be a bit uh, complex uh, sometime um, because you, you rarely already have the probability distribution of the element of your thing or it depends on your data set. Um, so um, uh, that's the only peculiarity. And then the, um, the interpretation of what XI are is also a bit problematic. Uh, but uh, 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 overall, it's a, a very easy to implement um, algorithm and it's uh, quite useful. So if I have an advice, just make sure that however you implement it and however you're using it is concordant with uh, whatever field you are. Um, so if you, your field is using bits instead of Shannon, use that. Um, yeah. So I hope this was useful. Let me know in the comment if you have any question. And I wish you a great week.